The clock ticks, the seconds rush in, and earlier than you think, another day comes crashing by. Unexpectedly, you reach for the alarm to start your version of the daily stacking of bricks. Our society is a perpetual sound box of repeating opinions on hard work and success, when in fact, its very nature is meant to work against the individual. Now, if you say, how is that so? I point you towards the very heart of our dear friend, capitalism. Before getting on to that whirlwind of a topic, let us segue to a simpler point. What exactly is hard work? For instance, what does it mean to be a hard worker? Our most popular societal opinions, which of course include politics, as politics are a direct reflection of a society's opinions, make the answer to this question trivial. Hard work is the opposite of being lazy. And what is being lazy in this society, or any society for that matter? A common answer that is given is not working for a company that produces money or goods. But a more developed answer would be something along the lines of not adding to the well-being of one's group or collection by not participating. So if one does not produce for the collection or group they find themselves born in, they are lazy. So what does society usually do with lazy people? Well, we make them suffer. Non-working people are often unable to have access to the basic requirements of life due to their lack of participation. They are not allowed respect or even acknowledgement because we view them as less than, subhuman, the non-collected, or outsiders. A society with this basis may seem unrealistic, but it's the one we find ourselves in. A society that labels those who do not participate in its chosen activities as outsiders. Think about this. Why would anyone in their right mind exactly oppose the idea of welfare? Now back in time, this society gave only certain people the ability to work, intentionally excluding other groups as they were believed to be the worser kind and deserved harder lives. The birth of racism and a lot of other bigotries had its roots during this time period. But now, our society attempts to do the same for anyone who is labeled as lazy, otherwise known as people who don't work or who cannot work. Now, of course, the stipulation for this is that anyone who cannot work at least 40 hours a week is labeled as lazy. For those who aren't skilled in mathematics, I wanna do a simple breakdown. Now, a typical work day is eight hours a day with five days a week being the typical work week. Given that there are 24 hours in a day, and the average person sleeps about eight hours a night, it leaves us with 16 hours left. The average workday is eight hours. Eight hours of 16 is 50%. So Monday through Friday, 50% of one's time goes to working. While Saturday and Sunday, 0% of that time goes towards working. Now, by finding the average of the percentages throughout the week, we come to a conclusion of 36% which roughly means that more than one third of our time is spent working for only enough resources and wages for one to three months. After some analysis, we come to a conclusion that this daily grind perhaps is just a system of control that works against the individual, but for the collection. Now for the collection may sound good and positive, but we know the collection does not include the many. It only includes the 1% aka the controllers of this very system who are equally uncontrolled by it. That is to say, our daily grind is just the way the 1% control us. If you find that difficult to believe, then look no further than fractional banking, which is just the loaning out of small portions of your money deposited in a bank. The bank receives most of the profit, and when I say most, I mean more than 99%, while the individual is given back less than 1%, yet, those who are lazy deserve not to eat. In 2020, I spent significant time in Portland, Oregon as a street photographer and learned a lot of opinions about homeless people. As Portland, Oregon has a high population of homeless people, I heard opinions ranging from kick them out of the city to put them on an island far away so we can ignore them. 
I found this funny as these comments were from the mouths of the same people who are employed. Employed people. The employers of these people are oftentimes the perpetrators of the crisis, paying lower wages yet knowing the cost of housing for their workers. The same organizations who lobby to get rid of the homeless people are the same organizations responsible for their inability to be homed. If you have ideas that that's not true, or maybe homeless people shouldn't be lazy, or maybe they shouldn't be druggies, or maybe they shouldn't be unemployed, perhaps think about the idea that everyone in this society, most people, are only one to three months away from being at that same exact point. We know being unemployed is not a show of will, but often a roll of die. Just ask the millions who lost their jobs, livelihoods, and positions during the most recent pandemic. One might even ask, are we in the state of dystopia? Which might just be a spectrum of how a society develops over time. Initially pointing towards a utopia and unfortunately creating and sustaining a dystopia. Today we had another discussion of the mind, a meeting of the ideas to formulate and chase the truth. Don't forget to hit the like button if you thought this was thoughtful enough. And leave a comment about what part specifically made you think differently. Thanks for being here and I hope to see you next time.